And India remains a popular destination for global investors and that's our top focus right now. The foreign direct investment into India took flight in the later part of 2023 with expectations now for the trend to continue this year. Any country looking to attract and maximize foreign capital must take into account the factors that influence foreign direct investment in flows and the following the main aspects influencing foreign investment in flows into India our economic stability and that's the top reason india is the fastest growing major economy in the world with the outlook for the country to continue on this path in 2024 as well where political stability also on expectations the current government will again come to power in the national elections this year and with that stability comes a conducive regulatory environment which is helping india in fact among foreign investors now, India has had a steady flow of foreign investment over the last decade and almost every industry in India has seen foreign investment including the pharmaceutical, automotive, textile and railway sectors to name a few. Infrastructure development, job creation, higher exports and significant support for the formal sector, these all have resulted from a foreign investment. A large Indian diaspora is also helping with investments in the country. And for more on this, we are being joined right now by Mr. D.P. Singh. He's the Deputy Managing Director and Joint CEO, SPI Mutual Funds, and he joins us live from Mumbai. Welcome to the broadcast, uh, Mr. Singh. And my first question is, now, what is your outlook Thank for you. money flowing into India? See, I am very, very bullish on this. And uh, the uh, moment we are talking to the foreign investors, uh, NRIs, as well as FPIs and FDIs, they are very, very bullish on India. And uh, rightly so, because of the growth trajectory, which is likely to be there in the next decade. Of course, there are sometimes it's being talked that, that the valuations are stretched, so on and so forth. But at the same time, there's a Tina factor. And uh, see, people are factoring the growth the growth which is likely to come in India is, is something which, which is attracting a lot number of investors and a uh, lot number of money, amount of money which is flowing in and will continue to flow in. And that's evident from the fact, the numbers which we have seen for the month of uh, December also, the data for which has come. So, so people are putting in money and the best part is that there's no uh, demand supply kind of uh, gap because a lot of IPOs are also coming and a lot of uh, uh, new corporates are entering into into the into the public space. So that's another uh, good story uh, for for all of us to to watch. And Mr. Singh, uh, what is the outlook for Indian markets and mutual funds? See, Indian markets, uh, see, mutual funds uh, and Indian market, they are two uh, separate things. Indian market is the same uh, as I talked about, uh, that that um, markets definitely at this point of time, valuations look little uh, stretched when we look at the macro number. But there are still a lot of stories which are yet to unfold. There are a lot of stocks which are still at very, very fair values. And, and uh, see, the investment managers, the portfolio managers are looking into those stories and getting the money into those stocks. It's not that now all is going into one stock. Or, uh, that's the reason why mid caps and small caps and the people, uh, the, the stocks which have not been in favor are uh, getting into favor because people are researching a lot more companies than ever before. So that's the reason and I think the outlook is, is very, very good uh, for, for the businesses. Uh, when we talk about the certainty on the political side, uh, see one thing is very clear. Uh, the small percentage of uh, uh, see uncertainty which is there, uh, even if that rectifies, the business are, businesses are in very, very good uh, health, very pink of their health. And, and the, the political will, the politics and uh, 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 the economics go, don't go always hand in hand. These are independent businesses are in, in pink of health. And I don't uh, uh, think that even if there's a small percentage of uncertainty, even if that rectifies, the the the, you know, the the markets may have some uh, short term hiccups, but but eventually the businesses will take over, and and, and uh, we are going to have a very good run. Yeah. And do you think that the bets on uh, India are justified? 
uh yes it is it is justified because uh because of the uh, reasons of the growth trajectory uh, people don't one year is not a unit one quarter or uh, two quarters is not a unit of uh, how the markets look at it they look at 10 years 20 years growth trajectory of the country and i think we are in the best of the era all the reforms which have been uh, which have taken place during the last 5 10 years those are going to show the results now and these are going to come in next one or two decades and uh, the reforms are uh, going to happen unabated more and more reforms will come and with the kind of geography the kind of uh, the diversity and the kind of uh, the the overall uh, see, country is i think we will have a very very good run in the coming one or two decades mm. and where do you see the best opportunity you know if one were to choose the best for investments in india see today uh, see when you're talking about uh, the way where to invest more uh, see one is the public space uh, one is the private space the public space is is definitely as i said earlier a uh, lots of of uh, businesses small businesses mid sized businesses smes they are coming into public space and that is where the investments can happen and can get very good valuation and in the private space also if you look at the aif number pms numbers those are attracting lot of money and the best thing is there is a lot number of portfolio managers in the country today who are are researching many many more companies than ever before i i see in my own company we are going uh, uh, all across the country every nook and corner looking at the businesses talking to the management researching them and uh, hand holding them to come into the public space because mutual funds are mostly when when we want that indians should participate in the growth trajectory then we have to bring the businesses into the public space that that's what we feel as a leader in the country that is our responsibility and uh, we owe this to the to the countrymen that we make them participate in the growth trajectory that is only part of indians uh, when they are looking at it the, the the foreign money which we are attracting is definitely coming into the space where where it is already there where there is a track record that's another bucket where we are working very very hard and the whole industry is working very hard to get more and more number of people into into the, uh, this industry no if not through mutual fund route but definitely through aif route and uh, the, the the pms route and i think that the gift city opportunities which are opening up uh, will be a blessing in disguise for all, all of us in 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 the uh, in the in the economic world yes and mr singh you've we've already talked about the growing popularity of mutual funds uh, but what categories could nris uh, invest for the long term you did touch upon that briefly could you delve into it a little more deeply yeah see if you uh, think about the nris and the psyche of nris one they are they are very bullish on india two they are not into the trading mindset they are busy in their own sphere so generally they have a tendency that that they uh, want to fire and forget shut it forget it kind of thing and when they have the 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 this complete confidence on india india and india story then they they are coming i think the people who can uh, participate uh, in the in the equity space and who have the risk appetite and most of them have so they they should get into a fund which is locked in so so uh, the industry is positioning funds uh, unfortunately we don't have too many uh, uh, close ended funds in the in the in the industry uh, because over the period of time over the last one or two decades we have sold liquidity more than required so the illiquidity is something which which is to be sold to nris because they also don't have the capacity to watch it day in and day out so the close ended funds like uh, long term equity funds where the lock in is there and there are uh, there are funds uh, those, those could be in elss category because by statute uh, you have to have three year kind of lock in but those are best suited who want to be into the to the equity category and on the other side I, if they want to play uh, the the uh, the asset allocation route uh, if they are putting lot of money in debt also i think the hybrid funds like multi asset allocation or balanced advantage funds are the best for them and uh, they they can definitely put in money get the uh, tax advantage and most of the countries now we have the double tax tt as well so these are very tax efficient and these kind of funds in equity side most of the nris actually want 
that they should lock in. And the, for the lock-in thing, that the, the the ELS funds kind of category suits them. Because this I'm seeing, uh, I'm saying out of the experience. Though ELS funds are there where, where you can put money for tax saving up to one like fifty thousand. But those are very, very well positioned to get big ticket business also of, uh, of the people who are coming and uh, locking in money. And uh, on, the, on, the, on the security side, I think uh, these kind of uh, diversified funds uh, through ELSS funds route and, and the, uh, the hybrid funds like balance advantage fund and multi-asset allocation fund are the best for them. All right, Mr. Singh, and uh, talking about global flow down, like, now how is India going to navigate uh, through it, in your opinion? See, as is always said, India has two things. One, very, very robust domestic economy, and then, then the export orientation. When the uh, countries are slowing down, and uh, uh, but, but at the same time, if you look at US, look at Germany, even today Germany's number, the inflation number has come at 3.8%. So that that's something which 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 is uh, being seen. It's not that everything is cycle. We can hope that that, uh, that the things improve uh, uh, across the globe, and and the the export uh, oriented uh, corporates will definitely get benefited once that happens. Today, the the disadvantage is that the, the because of the slowing economy, our uh, companies were export oriented. They are facing a uh, little, uh, little uh, but but the domestic uh, economy is failing. The overall uh, um, uh, the story is 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 good, but but uh, yes, this is a uh, cyclical thing. As of now, it is looking bad, but but we are hopeful that a U.S. economy and European economy will also come out of it. The uh, U.S. has also seen some. Uh, U.S. has already seen some uh, green shoots. And, and the numbers which are coming from uh, select European economies are also uh, showing signs of improvement. Well, thank you, Mr. Singh, uh, for staying with us and giving us the detailed insight into the questions. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much. Thank you.